Jesus is. He is God, even though he is not, you know, he's not supposed to be man. He became man for our sake, out of his great love for all of us. Even if he became man, the pagiging Dios niya hindi na pabasa. He became man like us in many ways, except for one thing, except for sin. He was man like us in many ways, except sin. And that is why we can understand and that is the reason why we are visiting this place. Jesus wept. And in those times that he wept, it was significant. Why? Because he wept not for himself, but he wept for our sake. Maybe because Jesus is seeing something, something that's so great for man to bear. And that is something that's hurting him. Why? Because you see, from the very start of creation, God would like us to be happy. That's why from the very start of our life, you know, the invitation of the Lord is to follow Him. Not to go astray, not to leave Him at His not to leave and go our separate ways, but to follow Him all the time because the Good Shepherd will lead us where we shall be happy. But then you see, man is free. We say that that's one great thing that the Lord has given us, the gift of freedom, the gift, the gift of free will. And that's why we can decide for ourselves. That's why we, 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 have, we have the right to choose what is right, what is wrong, what is good for us and what's not good. But then, we ought to always bear in mind that we need to consult Jesus in everything that we do so that we will not be separated and we will not go wrong. Because every time we make wrong decisions, it's not only us who experience difficulties and problems in life, but it is the Lord also who weeps for us. That's, I think, the reason why he went in this very place. He was seeing the great temple of Jerusalem, he was seeing the great city of Jerusalem, but then, even if, you know, they, they, they give lip service to the Lord in their hearts, the faith that was instilled in them has never been incarnated in their lives, has never been fulfilled in their lives. So, what is the challenge to us as we make this pilgrimage to make that faith alive in us? And when that faith is alive in us, then we can always be assured that we will be strong against sin. Why? Why do we need to be strong against sin? Why do we need to be strong against temptation? Because sin and temptations, they separate us from the love of the Lord. And when we are separated from the love of the Lord, we can always imagine Jesus is weeping for us. Why? Because God does not want us to be separated from Him. And so hopefully, we try to realize how in our everyday lives can we make Jesus happy. Right? How in our everyday lives can we proclaim His good news? Because I think that is our mission as Christians. Not just to proclaim by words is good news, but we ourselves can be good news for others. Our very lives is our testimony of our faith in Jesus. And when we do that, you see, it's a dominant effect. When we try to do that because we want the Lord to be happy, then we will be happy. And other people surrounding us will all be happy. Why? Because our motivation is always to do good. Our faith, in this year of faith, tells us to rediscover the beauty of who we are and the power inherent in that goodness that is in us. And when we realize who we are and that the children of God who loves us dearly, then that faith in Jesus Christ will give us the strength and power to always do good, to make God happy make other people surrounding us happy. And eventually, we will all be happy in life. And with that, at least, if we, each one of us, will try to do that, then Jesus would have lesser reason not to cry again. And that is a very beautiful thought. We can always think every day of 
about our lives. To make Jesus happy, to make other people happy, and when we do that, we will all be happy. Amen? Amen. So we pause for some moments, and maybe we can think of ways how to make Jesus happy.